Now over three weeks on the road, my wife Rochelle and our three kids, Cyrus, Ryder, and Eli, are in search of refuge from the intense Montana heat. Our summers here are hot, and winters often touch 20 below for weeks on end, reinforcing that Montana is a land of extremes. And I say all that to confirm your suspicion that you should not move here, for your safety, of course. So yeah, we are retreating back up into the mountains to find some thick timber and cool off. Our Croft family favorite of tacos is on the stove. And as they are finished, the sky has become a little darker and large man-sized drops are falling through the timber like wrongfully dropped paratroopers. Ryder and Eli seem to love it. I remember when I was a kid, how exciting it was to get your new raincoat and test it out. I think these kids could be out here for hours. Dishes have moved inside and we're all retreating to our campers and tents as the storm intensifies. I retreat to the loft and review the day's progress and prospects for the week ahead. Tomorrow is a new day. Hopefully the creeks won't be blown out. Our Montana solo adventure is presented by General Tire and the Grabber X3, the official tire of the Croft Solo Adventure, available at TireRack.com and in association with Patriot Campers Toy Haulers and Peak Horror Systems. Day after a good wet night we need to go look for some wood and I had dawned on me that my boys don't really know how to go find good wood I mean there's sticks and stuff that you can go get for a fire but there's a way to find and process really good wood for fires and uh, it takes time and it's fun and they don't know it all right boys let's go put your wands down yeah dead Standing wood is what we want to find, right? Mm -hmm. yes. If wood is standing and it's dead, does it have any green on the very tips? No, no it's dead, right? Mm -hmm. That's the best firewood you can find. So let's let's find the right amount of the right size of wood that we can process without burning up tons of energy, right? Yeah. Cool. Let's let's go look at this one. Yeah. I'd say it's one of my favorite things to do as a dad, to pass on what I've learned in the field over the years. And back in the day, before I flunked out of college, I was a forestry major at the University of Montana. Though I flunked out, it did teach me a great respect for the woods, and I've been working on woodsman skills ever since. You have a machete. Machete will do great on a lot of this small stuff. And then you're going to have to use the axe on a lot of the upper stuff, right? Learning how to process wood is critical if you want to be efficient. Do it wrong and you will find yourself quickly exhausted or hurt. Learning what wood is right to cut, having the right tools for the job, and letting those tools do the work instead of your muscles is fundamental. When you have a tree on the ground, Cut an optimal size log for your fire and then replicate that down the tree. Also, safety first on all of this. Gloves, pants, and eyewear, and closed toe shoes are a must. So when I split this wood, I want to go right to the center, right? Yep. Am I going to go like this? No. I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to set it here, straight up, and then as I come down, I'm going to drop my knees. I once nearly chopped my finger off when I cut corners by not wearing gloves. And had I followed my own advice here, I would have saved myself a grand at the ER in four weeks of recovery. And I wouldn't have had to leave my good friend Jeff's bachelor party either to go get my stupid fixed. 
I made sure to tell all the boys not to wear any of that stuff that I just said so we can demonstrate to you what not to do. One might think that, oh well, it's dangerous to let your kids chop wood. And well, I guess it is, but they are fully capable of it. And thousands of kids younger than mine are chopping wood all over the world on a daily basis. It really is amazing what young kids can do if you just give them a chance. It does take time to get proficient at all of this, but the process of learning it is half the fun. And the reward of a well-split tree for the fire is always worth earning. Got the side-by-side -side filled up. Ryder and I are gonna go fish Rock Creek, which is a pretty well-known fly fishing spot. Cool off a little bit. It's still pretty hot today. And see if we can catch a little bit of dinner. Get Ryder a little bit more experience. Get Dad a little bit more patience. And have a good time. So we're gonna run down there. It's about four or five miles. Get back in a few hours. Waypoint one is our camp. Got a good feeling about this one? Yeah. Okay, love it. Here's the old fly fisherman's trick. Put it here, brace it under your wiper. Seemed to work just the same on a side-by-side. Here we go, here you go, sir. Get a flat tire? You gotta repair your repair your flat tire there. Yep, got it. I just lost the other fly, so it's time for. We'll try Ryder's lucky fly here. Can you pull that off, or is it hooked to no end? Time for Ryder's lucky fly. We'll see what we can get done here. My goal right now with Ryder is not to it's just let him have fun, build his confidence, get him into stuff that uh, hopefully he'll catch fish at, but being really patient. I remember learning to fly fish. It, was, it's, it takes a long time. So you just got to find good places that they can work through their problems, get a little experience here, get a little experience there. Hopefully they catch a few fish along the way to keep that keep that buzz going, you know? The lucky fly, or any fly, we didn't get it. We're gonna have to return back to camp, but we'll take the lucky fly and put it back on Ryder's hat so that he won't lose it. So you gotta roll it up now. You want a beer? A root beer? Okay. Well, even though we didn't catch any, was it worth it? Mm -hmm. Still had fun? Good job. Are you up for the task? I think you are too. He's just turning that steep corner. That's all right, we'll just go slow. 
minutes. We just learn all this stuff slow. Okay, so foot on the brake. Go down to high. It's also seen here, high. All right, now come off the brake and add gas. Okay, here's some bumps. Let's go to the right. Yeah, let's go right. Right, a little more. There you go. There you go. Woohoo! Back at camp, Mom and Eli prepare something special for tonight as Cyrus lights a fire this time with raw hands and complete satisfaction, knowing he was a part of this process from start to finish. Nice job. Just perfect. Put it in park. Make sure it says P. Always make sure it says P. Now turn your ignition all the way off. Well done. Thank you. You did it, sir. Okay. This is amazing, man. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Want that piece too? This is so good, Mom. Now packed up and leaving our camp, we head onto Highway 38, also known as the Skalkahoa Highway. Skalkahoa Falls is a sight to see, and it's one that's been visited since ancient times. You know, a long time ago, Highway 38 was a heavily used trail for Indians. It is now a winding seasonal road that offers some excellent views, affording the opportunity to see wildlife such as elk, black bear, and deer, just to name a few. We steer up Lost Horse Road into the Twin Lakes area. It's right on the very edge of the Montana and Idaho border. Finding a campsite to our liking, we begin the camp setup process. Already, it's evident that the boys' confidence has increased tremendously. 
and they set up camp like they've been doing it for years. Nice work, Bean. Can he do it? Wow! So easy, even a 12 year old can do it. Nice. Max did not too. touch the goo. Max did too. He'll tell you about it. Hey, dear. I'll just kind of show you how we do laundry real quick. When it comes to it, we get our three and a half gallon bucket. Our three and a half gallon bucket just seems to be the bucket that rules them all. Five gallon is a little too much. And uh, three and a half gallon black bucket is awesome because it heats up in the sun. So what we do is we put soap in this one, rinse it, let it sit in there, let it get warm. You may even let it sit in there for a couple hours if you're gonna do it right, if you're gonna be there all day. And then you can uh, pull them out, wring it out, and then we bring it over here. You can either use fresh lake water or we've been using just warm PCOR water from the back of the PCOR here. Rinse it out with fresh water, just a quick rinse, hang it up to dry. Well, it's a big day. We drove more than we thought we would. We got, got into camp. It's really buggy up here. And that is probably one of the best parts about this camper so far is you can crawl in relax and stay out of the bugs mama and i are gonna go to sleep listening to the boys giggle in their tent like every single night which is pretty awesome it is a good sound you, you know life's good when you just lay in there listening to your kids giggle it's the best until they won't stop shaking the truck and camper <laughs> then we yell at them and then we go to bed so anyway we're gonna go to bed good night <laughs> after a lazy start to the morning we're now on the road headed towards what some might say is the birthplace of montana the historic ghost town of bannock As we make our way to the southwestern end of the state, we come across a piece of Montana heritage. In a land of short summers, harsh winters, and huge fields of hay, two ranchers from the Big Hole area invented a way to put up a section of hay quickly and move to the next area. We pull over to get a look at a contraption known as a beaver slide. These one-of-a-kind portable hay stacking devices got the job done and allow the hay to be preserved for up to six years. With teams of men and horses hoisting hay, others with pitchforks distribute and compact the hay till it was a domed stack, some 30 feet high. And the slides could then be moved to a different area of the field to begin again. Earlier, as we traveled through Hamilton this morning, I made a quick stop to pick up Ryder a special gift. I anoint you a true fly fisherman. Been awarded your truest fly fisherman. I remember when my dad gave me my first rod. In fact, I fished with it for 20 years before I got a new one. It wasn't because it was good, in fact, it was pretty horrible. But I fished with it because it was one of the rites of passages as a boy. And now, that right has been awarded to Ryder, who has expressed his true interest in the craft of fly fishing. Rites of passage are critical to boys especially. They don't need to be glorified sword ceremonies, they can be small ones that signify that a young man is growing into a man. Without these events, a young man may start to ask himself later if he has become one. It's good to be able to look back and track your progress. He 
You know, we didn't plan to camp here tonight, but I'd say it's worked out really well. That's part of overland travel. It doesn't always have to be scheduled or predetermined. In fact, many of the best experiences out here are the ones you never see coming. As you make your plans, be sure to leave enough room in the schedule for things you just can't predict. And I'd be willing to bet that those are more often great experiences versus the dreaded worst case scenario that you packed your entire truck to the gills for. We are headed to the historical Montana town of Bannock. It is actually where Montana was founded. With a southern bearing from camp, we hit the Pioneer Mountain Scenic Byway, a very old mountain range with certain clues left in the fields of what used to be. Though this field looks unassuming, stories lie all about the grass. Carried from the high mountains and dropped here by wayward glaciers over 10 millennia ago, each boulder marks a time and place in the past Reminders of a cold age long gone. Looking to the east gives a view of jagged peaks, like the barred teeth of a wolf. While looking to the west, the hills are dull and old. Around 70 million years ago, mountains in this part of the world were on the move. During all this commotion, large plumes of molten magma rose from the depths of the earth. And to the east, the molten granite rose and penetrated high into the sky, while in the west, the intrusions of granite remained under the slowly weathering sandstone and formed the pioneer mountains we see today. And those mountains supported the very first of the pioneers to stake a claim in this untamed country. Founded in 1862 and named after the local Bannock Indians, Bannock was the site of a major gold discovery. On July 28, 1862, John White and other members of the Pikes Peakers discovered gold in the creek waters where Bannock stands today. News of the strike traveled fast and led the greatest rush to the west since the California Gold Rush in 1848. A mining camp was quickly built, literally springing up overnight. It served as the capital of Montana's territory, briefly, in 1864, until the capital was moved just north to Virginia City. There were three hotels, three bakeries, a blacksmith shop, a billiard hall, and four saloons. And one of these saloons, in particular, was the infamous Skinner Saloon. Nice people did not wander into Skinner's. This was where the most dangerous, meanest, and ruthless men in the territory congregated. The demise of road agent George Carhart happened in this very building. One evening when gambler George Banfield's love of winning got the best of him and he was discovered cheating, both men emptied pistols at each other inside the saloon, missing on every shot. At first, the only effect of their impromptu fray seemed the accidental shooting of Toodles, a small local dog. While lamenting the loss of the community dog, it was discovered that George Carhart was shot in the stomach. He died a short time later in extreme agony. So much shooting and violence occurred daily in the saloon that the barber in the corner wouldn't miss a stroke with a straight edge razor when the bullets started flying. There are many good tales here, some of them better than the last. You'll just have to travel to Bannock to hear them for yourself. Pretty interesting. Wow. Montana is full of hidden secrets. Some in gold, some in story. And we are now headed to our own secret part of Montana. But you'll have to discover that next time on Solo. <laughs>